Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my face, uh, Facebook users, uh, YouTubers, and welcome to another edition of Living Simply and Fun. I'm your host, Aries, and here is Aaron. Yes, uh, we're reviewing a few cigars today. Uh, one of my samplers came in. Uh, this is the uh, Toro sampler from Thompson. It's mostly fairly Thompson brands, Don Augusto, Don Choo Choo, Don Osvaldo, Don Elias, and Don Lugo. All a bunch of Don, so I guess I'm Don Aaron. Um, I'm Don this, this Aries. This is Don, uh, Donessa Aries, yeah, or something, or Donetta, or whatever, I don't know. Anyways, uh, it's supposed to be two Maduro and two Connecticut's from each brand. Well, we smoked earlier today the uh, Don Osvaldo uh, Maduro's. So, I'll start by going over that. Uh, we took this on a, uh, those on a walk... Uh, sorry, I don't have one in front of me because we smoked the two of the examples. So, um, yay, yeah, yeah, you're supposed to be involved in this I'm one. I'm letting you talk She's first. more interested in cigar catalogs than talking about cigars. I'm going to let him talk at the So, moment. anyways, uh, we're going on this walk, and uh, we probably didn't even do a full mile walk. Um, and uh, you're distracting me. I'm trying to see what you're doing, too. Um, so... On the walk, I noticed one thing, that it had a fairly even burn, even though Rita's wasn't burning evenly, right? Yeah, mine wasn't burning evenly till in the end. And then mine kind of started burning a little funny. So, for the most part, though, they burn evenly, and they do correct themselves. Uh, Rita's corrected herself. Mine was so close to the end, it didn't need recorrecting, and it did recorrect itself by the very end. Um... Then, uh, let's see, as for the flavor of it, it was very mild. It didn't burn my mouth. I wasn't sitting there like, oh, I need a glass of water from all this. So I actually felt really decent from it, and uh, it had a very nice flavor to it. The smell was pretty nice. It stayed lit. I never had it go out on me. Um, I think Rita's went out once. Uh, no, no, it didn't no, because no. it was too windy for me to have to read. And then when I went this way and changed direction and started puffing on it, it stayed lit. And so, that's when it started correcting itself. Yes, and it stayed nice and lit the entire walk. So that was a good thing. However, you'd expect uh, maybe an hour to an hour and a half out of your cigar. This probably took uh, 35 minutes uh, to 45 42 minutes. 42 to 45. So it was a fairly fast burn too, but it did not burn the heck out of my mouth. Now, uh, when it comes down to the uh, Don Osvaldo's, uh, it's forty four ninety five for a for bundle four. of 40, five, uh, 40 of them. So it works out to $1.12 per cigar. Um, and that's the Don Osvaldo. Oh, and these are Churchill Maduros. What we had was Toro Maduros. So I don't know the difference in price. Um, but it's not a big deal. I'm, I figure that the Don Osvaldo's all are pretty much the same flavor. Uh, Don Osvaldo, two for Sumatra, Sumatra Torpedoes, Churchill's, Churchill's, Sumatra Torpedoes. So they don't sell them by the Toros in, uh, as a group. So looks like Churchill Maduro is the only way to go. So I'd still highly recommend getting the Churchill Maduros because they are very flavorful and very good cigar. Uh, and, and a decent looking wrapper in my opinion too. They weren't torps, you know that. No, but it said um, four for so I was wondering. Oh, four a four for. Two four. Oh six, yeah, you eight, get four ten. bundles of ten. Ten. For the price of one. Oh yeah, forty Don Osvaldo. So continue. So, uh, anyways, uh, I definitely recommend them. Um, I cannot complain about them. Um. Yeah. They only have torpedoes and Churchills. So they must have given Churchills instead of Toro. So this has something special in it they don't carry. Churchills are 7 by 50 I think we smoked 7 inches by 50 Well, these are what you call Toros. So look at the Don Augusto size. Those are Toros. So anyways, uh, we'll move on to the Don Augusto Toro Connecticut's that we had later. 6.5 by 50 So they're not quite sure. Oh, it says right there Churchill. See? Wrapper. Oh, no, it doesn't. Never Toro, mind. Right there. So the Toros are a little smaller than Churchill's. So you can't get the Toros. Oh, wait. Torpedoes. No, tor torpedoes 60. are not Toros. I know, but they're the same length. Oh, same length, but it's not the same. Um, so anyways, uh, we'll move on to the Don Augustos. Now, I will admit that I was not focusing on my cigar um, during smoking this Connecticut. 
Um, it does have a very decent wrapper. I like that. It's got a nice smell to it. Easy to cut. Uh, it, uh, it burned evenly throughout the whole thing. I had no problem with that. What I did have a problem with is mine would not stay lit. And during the last three inches or so, I was inhaling heat, but no smoke at all. And what I mean by inhale is just drawing it into my mouth. It's like the smoke wasn't coming into my mouth, but the burn was. And it was like sucking on a hot cherry. I could not handle it anymore. And so I ended up tossing about that much of my cigar because it just would not smoke. Now, Rita said she had no problem with hers. No, I had no <clears throat> trouble with mine. I thought the flavor was good for the first the like flavor half, was but... very good, very decent, very mild. It was very earthy. Um, it could just be that I wasn't focusing on it. He wasn't focusing. I, I had mine go out, go out get, once. And, and once you start smoking it, you get the smoke come through and there's some moisture and it really gets things wet inside. So that could have led to everything going out and the burn. And But my granddad used to smoke his, let it go out, come back to it later. And he never had a problem either. And he used to chew the heck out of his cigars. He'd sit there even with it unlit and chew on it. So, um, anyways, I kind of had some memories of my grandfather today because of the cigars. And I look forward to having more cigars tomorrow. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, yours we... are supposed to possibly come in tomorrow evening, so. Uh, maybe from Spokane. Right now, maybe. it's, you know, um, let's just show the box since he's got it. This is the box. I thought cigars would be a bigger box, but that's what you get right there. Yeah, and since they're Toros, I mean, it's an average size for this. Um, the Don Augustos, I, I can show you here that the Don Augustos, they essentially look like that. Uh, there's a blue wrapper with uh, silver. Uh, they're handmade in the Dominican Republic. Compare the sizes. Yeah, it's a very small cigar compared to that one. Um... I love it when a plan comes together. And this is the Don Osvaldo, Connecticut, which actually is a fairly dark leaf. Uh, the label says Don Osvaldo with like a, a family banner behind it and then gold with the black, uh, black with gold cross hatching that looks like diamonds. It's also uh, Dominican Republican made. I will let you all know... That I'm going to try to get an 8-pack of these so Aaron and I can actually do a video review on them. Yes. Um, no, I don't want to do one on them. Uh, you just, I'll get sick. You just make sure to put a hole in it. So you I smoke can draw, them all, okay? Then now, I can draw. I, more important, I want to talk about these still. This Toro sampler was through Thompson. It was $23.95, I think. Um... The packaging for it is fairly cheap, but the plastic actually did hold it in, and you can actually tell that they're very moist, so they did come very well humidified, in my opinion. Uh, I do not have a humidifier at this time, so I'm hoping we smoke these quick. Um, uh, but I do find the packaging unique. Uh, there's a Dominican Republican like dollar on the bottom. Which is kind of interesting. A um, little barrel. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's real or not. It probably isn't because it says premium class cigars too. So, yeah, it's probably not a real dollar. But it's kind of cool to have that anyways on there. I, I like the nifty little things that you find on cigars sometimes. I wanted to say before going, I look forward to trying the Don Lugo. Well, we had Don Lugo... Um, um, Churchill's quite a long time ago, and these are the Don, Don Lugo. Lugo Torps. No, we didn't have any Toros. Um, Torps. We never tried the Torps, I didn't think. I said, yeah, but they did. They this gave has, them to it. This has Don Lugo Maduros here on the end, and then Don Lugo Connecticut Toros. So, we'll be interested in trying those. I I haven't been interested really in the Don Elias or the Don Choo Choo, but, you know, the Don Choo Choo does have a very nice label, and it could very well be a good smoke. Uh, the Don Lugo I knew I smoked over 120 of them for 20, 40, 80, something like that. Anyways, a long time ago, seven years ago, they had some. I mean, these certainly aren't your fine like Gurkhas or Rocky Patels or uh, whatever, but uh, they they're they're decent for what for your money. It's pretty quality. 
Uh, um, yeah, exactly. It, it, These are what they I call mean, sampler packs. The Donna's Valdos, uh, or, uh, yeah, was, no, Donna Gustos, which we didn't get to. Donna uh, Gustos. Donna Gustos are thirty nine ninety five for a box of 20. So the Donna Gusto, which I wasn't happy with, yeah, yes, I know, 20. is almost $2 a cigar, whereas the one that I really liked was a dollar a cigar. Uh, well, dollar twelve. So there's a big difference in price. Uh, almost uh, ninety two cents or ninety eight cents. Yeah, dollar twelve. Ninety eight. Eighty eight cents. So eighty eight cent difference. Well, I guess that's not a big deal if you're buying just one single stick. But when you're buying a box of twenty or a box of forty, it starts to add up. Um, but I would actually go and buy the Don Osvaldos over the Don Augustos. I and would as well. Uh, so I, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you're paying more that it's going to be tasting better or that it's going to be higher quality. Uh, it, it depends on the manufacturer. The manufacturer could sit there and take a lump of crap, put a wrapper on it, and say, we want $20 a stick for it. And somebody out there is going to say, this is the greatest because it's $20 a stick and <laughs> here's his $2. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. In fact, I, I've seen Partegas that Rita's gotten that will not burn evenly no matter how many she smokes. And they're constantly going out. Well, I'm sorry. The Partega she was getting were eight ninety five a stick at our local place that sells cigars. We only have, like, one that we Is can get that, to. Is uh, that the one but, in Wifreda? Yeah, and it could be that they're not humidified properly. They're not as humidified but, broken. But the point is, you pay eight ninety five for those, and they wouldn't burn right. They kept going out. They were cooking the insides of your mouth. All you could do was basically be like, I'm smoking my money here, but it sucks. Uh, but, you know, if I could get these Don Osvaldos, much better choice, in my opinion. I just wanted to say something, because since we're doing this video jointly, there's a sampler that sold out from, uh, from uh, Cigar International, I'm saying this, it's funny because it says 99 cent handmade Churchills. You get 30 of them, 30 bucks pretty much. It says our po' boy, sa po boy samplers are like selling like mad. It's like the po' boy sandwich, by the way. But man cannot live I'll on bread alone. I'll just go off the thing. It says our version of the bag of crap. <laughs> and uh, it says you'll get a lot of cigar for the money and a few yucks in the process. There's no doubt when you buy cheap cigars, you're going to get some cheap product. And there's no doubt that sometimes you're going to find a wonderful gem in a bunch of cheap cigars. Uh, yes. And that you will find that you'll find a, w a wonderful gem now, and three months from now you'll go and buy that wonderful gem again, and it'll be a hunk of crap. <laughs> um, because with these cheaper places, sometimes the consistency isn't there. So you get one that's all of a sudden great, fantastic, wonderful consistency, great flavor, uh, and everything. And then the next time you get it, the consistency just ain't there. It doesn't burn right. It keeps going out. Its flavor is harsh. Uh, it's like, what did they do wrong this time? Oh. And that's I part had of the one the out of all of the Thompsons that I've smoked, and I've smoked a lot in my uh, life. They were garbage no matter yeah, what happened. Yeah, uh, Cuban Delights. They, yes, Cuban Delights. Uh, I will never get those again. Um, we tried them a couple times because they were given to us as a bonus with things we got. And actually, God, one of the old. times they were supposed to give us a Thompson brand, like old timers or something, but they were out. And so, so they, they substituted it. it with that, and it was the most utter crap. And it's like the one Thompson was always substituting in with our stuff. And so we got really sick of that. In fact, I'm so glad that this actually was pre sealed before Thompson got to ship it out because I was afraid they might stick some of those in here. Um, now, another thing I want to say about this is. There's two Don Lugo Maduros, two Don Lugo Connecticut's, two Don Elias Maduros, two Don Elias Connecticut's. We had two Don Osvaldo Maduros. There's two Don Osvaldo Connecticut's left. Two Don Chucho Maduros, two Don Chucha, Chuchu Connecticut's, and two Don Augusto Maduros, and then we smoked the two uh, Don Augusto Connecticut's. The thing that I like about this is the fact there's one for me and one for Rita, and we don't have to sit there and fight over, hey, there's only one of these, and I want to try it. Yeah, but I want to try it, too. Well, this way we both get to try it, and we can both give you our thoughts on it. Exactly, and that's one thing is why, talking about samplers, that's why we chose things like this one we're getting next month. 
Uh, so many samplers only have one of a type. And that's and, why we like this now, one. The I, Boy I don't two. mind one of a type, but we can't fight over them. And I don't want that. So it, it's best if we get two. And sometimes with those one samplers, it's like 40 bucks. You get 10 cigars, all random. You really don't want to go paying 80 bucks for two people to enjoy them. See, I got the victory. I mean... Here's the pro uh, what I'm talking about with uh, finances. If you got to pay 80 bucks for you to enjoy 10 cigars a piece, like this little bit in a dream here, um, then the problem is that it's no longer fun because now you're 80 bucks in the hole. But you go and spend $23 plus shipping, and, and plus shipping. So $27 is what it costs all together, and you get. You know, five days minimum of enjoyment, and twenty-three dollars doesn't break the bank. Uh, and people say poor people shouldn't be smoking cigars. I'm sorry, actually, if this was me alone, this would take me over a month to smoke all this. And he would make them dry. I, I'm gonna smoke them faster because Rita smokes them faster, and I want to enjoy them with her. So yeah, it's causing me to smoke more at the same time. But when they're gone, they're gone. Then and we just, you know, by then, uh, well, well you'll get yours in probably tomorrow or the next, or Saturday to, is what tomorrow they said. or Monday. Saturday. Oh, tomorrow or the next day, okay. So, she'll either get hers tomorrow or the next day, and then we'll have another 20, uh, which will now give us 10 days, and that's if we smoke two a day. Uh, I don't foresee us uh, smoking two a day every day. I want to say something, uh, no, but let me see that box for a second. There's uh, something I do want to say about the man handling this box. What it's I getting wanna, felt up a lot. Yeah, well, what I also want to say about this sampler pack is, is he's right, we're not going to smoke every day. But what he's doing is he's going and thinking, hmm, which one do I want to try today? And then he'll pick one out. And then when yeah, my turn comes, what I said with Rita is, I bought this one, so why don't I sit there and say, hmm, this is the one I want to try next. Let's try this one. That way, she can't sit there and say, oh, I want to try that one. I'm like, oh, I was saving that one for last. I don't want to smoke that one now. But when it comes to her, she gets the same choice. She gets to choose. Now, I might say tomorrow, I don't know which one to smoke. Which one do you want? And then you could sit there and choose which one you want. And then it's like, oh, yeah, okay, we'll go with that one. So I also want to give you oh, a, a and bit we're of We're talking advice. about for if my friend does come out, we've already come up with a plan. Uh, he said he'd have a cigar or two with us. He saw our last cigar video. And, uh, geez, you're tearing this book apart. Uh, anyways, I don't know exactly where they're located, but you found some good deals in there for a large quantity at a low, low cost. And they're decent, decent looking cigars. So, um, right here, the 1999 bundles Grant's Golden Siesta, Hesitant Pirate, Raja's Untimely Demise. Ron Mexico. And we wanted to try the Raji, so it's a good point to just go and buy uh, a bunch of Raji. Yes, but and... if I do the Po' Boy sampler, Raji comes with yeah, it. Yeah, I know, but then there's only two of them. But we get to sample it before well, it yes. comes out. Well, he should be coming out in a few days. Oh, okay. I mean, today's the 24th. He's talking about coming out on the 3rd. Okay. And then leaving the 29th, so it wouldn't get here before him. Ah, wow. Um, in fact, any if we did an order, we'd order it the day he comes in. And then I'd have it express shipped, by the way. So there wouldn't be any cigars for him that day unless we decided to get him some Swisher Sweets or a Philly Blunt or something. And that's not even a real cigar. But and then the other thing I noticed is this... I'm not, I'm not so 18 sure Josh cigars would be so for picky. 30, $18 for 37 cigars here. And then I saw some in the back here that looked really good for $20 well, there's the ones I well. like that were in the canvas bag. Ah, uh, yes, yes, these little ones. I was going to bring that up in our video. Um, in fact, I'm thinking about doing those for myself because I like the canvas bag. However, these are uh, cigarillos. No, it's not the Victor Sinclair cigarillos, which these you're thinking about. These are not Victor Sinclair. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they look like a bundle of a huge amount of cigars, but they're actually cigarillos. Yes, uh, anyway. But they're actually folded on the end. Uh, you know, The Banditos. Like, yes, Banditos. Right there in a bag. Two for... Uh, thirty-five or fifty-nine dollars. Fifty-nine gets you mild and sweet. Hundred twenty of them for sixty, or sixty for thirty-five. But the ones I now we have a friend who just recently, I think it was today, they got what brand was it? Uh, They're all sitting there bragging about and telling you how crappy yours are. 
Which uh, I yes. think is just hilarious. Asylums. Yeah, they got a... 270 and $248 a box. For how many? 20? Um, 20 or... Asylums were... A box of 30. So, so you a got box 60. of 30 for 220 bucks. Uh, that works out to a, a slightly over $7 a stick. Yeah, it's something like seven hundred or uh, seven dollars and fifty cents a stick. Yeah, close to. And here he's sitting about uh, telling us just how wonderful his are and how horrible ours are. You know, I can't tell you anything about the asylums because I haven't smoked them, but I can tell you that for the money, uh, I bet you anything that those uh, the Donna's Valdos we had earlier at a dollar a stick are a far better deal and not necessarily so-called quality, but what is quality anyways? Expense? Expense doesn't mean quality. Uh, I do want to bring up something Expense about Expense tends to again. come from something that's gotten rated with quality. Doesn't mean it's quality, though. I want to As I just said, I've seen Partegas that are horrible, and I've seen Macanudos and Baccarats that are horrible. Um... And I, as I've said, I've seen tons of cheapos that have been good this time, and next time you try them, they're horrid. So, um, I do want to say because of his what, thing What about, equals quality? Uh, there's something else. I used to sit there, and people used to say that I wasn't against people, except etc. I was more of a, they said, more racist towards products made in China. Well, Chinese make some pretty damn good stuff. And I don't know as I trust a Chinese-made cigar. Uh, because the ones who've been making them for years are in Honduras, Nicaragua, Cuba, Havana. You know, well, Havana is Cuba. Um, but the, they're all made in Latin America. I, I would not trust a Chinese company making my cigars. Well, um, what I'm trying to say is, is not... What I'm trying to say is, is when I did vid when I did videos in the past, Aaron would reprimand me as he knows for saying, "Oh, Chinese products are crap," you know. But sometimes I'd sit there and say, "Well, why should I go out?" And Aaron would listen and go and invest in a say um, a fly rod, for example, made in China. And Aaron says, "Well, you got to try it sometime, unless you want to pay eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand dollars or more." You no, know, you're not thinking what you're saying and you're reading. No, that's what I'm saying. For the example, when you say it, Aaron's right about the Chinese. They probably can't make a decent cigar, I don't know how but that what came is up in this, though. quality? Oh, quality, talking about yeah. quality. Most people think Chinese products are, are crappy. cheap quality because it's made of cheap quality materials. No, it's not necessarily made of cheap quality materials. The difference between China is they pay less for their labor than we pay for our labor. And uh, because of, um, we import most of our raw materials to use to build things, our raw materials cost more, which ends up ending up costing our product more in the end. And we also overcharge for the item. Whereas in China, they basically sell at a reasonable rate just above what they ended up uh, paying to make it. And their labor is essentially slave labor. And their materials can be just as good, but they don't have to pay huge amounts of money like we do to get those things. Many of those things are in their country already. Um, uh, exactly. So when people say, oh, well, you shouldn't buy a $20 bundle of cigars, it's crap. Well, what do you know? You're one of these snooty snoots that want to sit there and say... I, I mean, trust me, if you were in America and you're making cigars... You're going to have to get, first of all, your tobacco imported from Honduras, which means you're going to have to pay tariffs, import fees. Don't forget. Uh, you're, instead of paying about a dollar per worker per hour, you're going to have to pay $15 an hour per worker. Uh, and there's probably, uh, from what I understand about cigar making, there's at least three or four uh, people that have to go into rolling each cigar uh, or, you know, getting the process going. So, because uh, they're usually we think of the one person at the end rolling them out on the virgin thigh. But exactly. That, that's not the that. truth because they don't sit there and roll it all up. Somebody's got to chop it, break it up. It's not just like leaves rolled. <laughs> so, um, the outer is. And then let's say you want to, uh, for your Honduras leaf, you, uh, tobacco, uh, you might want a Maduro leaf. And the Maduro leaf comes from Nicaragua. You might have to now pay import taxes on top of that and tariff fees and 
all sorts of other things, and then you have to pay the cost that the Nicaraguans took to make it. And now you've got your two main components, and you got to put it together and then roll it. And then you, now you got to make a box, which the box is made out of cedar. partially Spanish cedar or some other type of cedar, usually Spanish, and then some type of other wood. Uh, it could be made out of cardboard, but cardboard's usually a sign of cheapness, so American companies aren't going to want to do that. Uh, I do want Because America th likes to proclaim themselves better, so it's going to be a fully wood box, a uh, cherry wood finish. For example... And by the time you've gotten your cherry wood and everything else, paid the imports and tariffs on that, and the workers to carve it and put it together, and then you filled it with cigars and sealed it, then you've got to pay your shipping costs, which the shipping companies charge a lot more in America than... A shipping company from Honduras to America. So in, in the long run, when we get the final product from Honduras, we might be paying two dollars a stick, whereas the American-made same exact version might not be as good. Is going to be seven fifty a stick just to recoup all their losses. Anyways, I so, wanted to say. Uh, all I'm trying to say, I know Davidoff's made in no. England, I think. Uh, Davidoff uh, David is like twelve or thirteen dollars. Davidoff is Dominican Republic. Ah, because, so they actually make theirs out of country. Uh, they have to because everyone's got the Cuban embargo. Now, you can't get Davidoff Cubans, but you have to live in Cuba. That, that has nothing to do with whether Davidoff is made in England or Cuba. I never said in Cuba. What I'm trying to say is I thought Davidoff was probably made in England because Davidoff is a British company. So is uh, uh, which means, Dunhill. Which means Dunhill's uh, Dunhill's which, what I'm trying to say. Oh, same with Dunhill. But if Dunhill and Davidoff are both having theirs made in Honduras, they're Honduras-made cigars with the name of Davidoff stamped on them, which means they aren't really Davidoffs. And you're paying for the name when it's not well, them. Well, then let me which just... Which means, here's another thing companies do. They'll give you, say, a Don Osvaldo Maduro Toro, and they'll take the same cigar and take the label off, and they'll stick on a Davidoff label and say, $2 a stick, $15 a stick. You're getting the same thing in some ways. Uh, not saying that they're the same company. I'm just making a comparison. That's all. It's a hypothetical, a theoretical, whatever you wish to say. I was going to say, for example, it says right here, uh, De uh, Ashton, which is a British company as well, is made in the Dominican Republic. Which probably means that they're made by some other company for Ashton. Ashton turns around and sells them. But I've always wanted to try an Ashton. I don't know how they'd smoke. Anyways, what um, I wanted to say is, for example, I was thinking of these, they're villagers, $20, a bundle. People say, oh, well, if it's in a bundle, it's not a cigar. But truthfully, they're Well, wrong. one thing I'm happy about is I now know a place to get my father's cigars, and I've been wanting to try one of those for like the last three or four years since I first heard about them. I watched, uh, uh, what's his name, Don Pepin? Yeah, Don uh, Pepin. I, I watched uh, uh, so, something else, too. It's like Garcia Pepin or something. Anyways, uh, I watched a video in which he was actually talking about the process and he was walking people through it. And uh, He did tours of his, uh, uh, his tobacco farm and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I learned a lot from it. I've worked on a tobacco farm briefly uh, and it was much different how he runs his tobacco farm than the one I worked on briefly. And to tell you the truth... Where he is, I can't remember if it's Dominican Republic or if it's uh, Honduras or where. But where where he's doing his, it is a full-scale operation that is absolutely beautifully run. Whereas in Kentucky, it's basically sow the seeds, reap it up with a ripper that just yanks them out of the ground, stab the heck out of them on metal spikes and hang them in a barn and let them dry. There was no growing little seedlings and checking the seedlings to make sure they were all consistent and looking good and everything. There was no going out in the field and planting each seedling individually. There was no rotating fields as much. It was like this year, next year, and the year after that will be this field. We'll start using that field next year and we'll cycle this one out. So there's three fields going with one not going. And then the one not going, they'll plant corn or something just for one year. And it's like, okay, so that's how it works. And there, there was no greenhouse. There was no people walking around every day and picking off bad leaves and trying to clean the bugs off by hand. There's pesticides. Well, down where he was working, there's no pesticides. They go and go after bugs themselves. They may have sprayed some chemicals into the ground. Oh, okay. I don't know, but uh, just so you know, on this, because they give a little history in this one since he was talking, Ashton... 
contracted the Fuente family, oh. Arturo Fuente, to make their so Ashton cigars. Ashton cigars are essentially Arturo Fuentes. Yes. With a higher price tag than Arturo's. Yes. Amazing, yeah. isn't it? Oh, and by the way, speaking of things like that, uh, if you go through Holtz, they have their own versions of Rocky Patel's. Not not ver own version. It's Rocky Patel makes an exclusive for them, which is a lot more affordable than most Rocky Patel's. It's essentially the same as their other Rocky Patel's, but they're Holt exclusives. So uh, I never knew that they uh, any tobacco company had an exclusive with a tobacconist or a tobacco salesperson, cigar company, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Rocky Patel does with Holt. And Holt's has some special ones called Mulligans. And they have all sorts of different mulligans. Uh, they're all golf terms. Rocky Patel mulligans, Rocky Patel mulligans, clubhouse select, and Rocky Patel mulligans caddy. And hold on. A bundle of 20 mulligans caddy is between twenty nine ninety five a box for 20 to thirty nine ninety five. And the normal Rocky Patels run anywhere from 49 to 199 So uh, you could be getting a nice gem there for the price. They are still Rocky Patels. Exactly. The other thing is, is exactly. So there's some Davidoffs. But anyways, this video has gone long enough. We were supposed to be reviewing the two types we smoked. And instead, we're going on to a huge tirade of everything else. I'm known for that. David Off is also made uh, in the Dominican Republic, probably by the Fuente family yet again. And by the way, just to let you know, David Off started at two hundred dollars and goes up to six sixty nine. Baccarats. I asked where they're na made, not to name the name. Honduran and Mexican blend out of Honduras. So they're Honduran. They're I would made. figure possibly because they're on the same page that they may have been the same company. They are some very the good. seems to do things like that. They are some very good cigars. Now this one I love me and Aaron rocks. want to talk about for a second. Which the one? The Buzzers Banquet. Oh, yes. Uh, only because of our friend Allison. Now, our friend Allison does, Don't not bend wa that. Uh, does not watch our channel. I'm not bending it. Look at it. Did I fold it? Crease it? No. Uh, our friend Allison, uh, she works at a liquor store in Pennsylvania. And they have a type of beer there Mad called Mad Elf. And she has one of the most unique personalities you could ever imagine on the face of the earth. And I love her for it. Uh, she's got a bizarre sense of humor, which is great. Um, but she really upsets a lot of people. So we... Oh, stop it. Why do you think I folded it? Anyways, we dead. call her the Mad Elf. And here, if you see the... Green one right there, the Candela. That's called an Angry Elf, and it's sold by a company out of Pennsylvania, which is where she's from, which makes me wonder if it has anything to do with the Mad Elf Beer Company, uh, which is a local area microbrew from Pennsylvania. Um, and so our Mad Elf, Allison, if you ever happen to watch this, which you won't, um, we do hope that you might in think about taking these to your liquor store and uh where you are in pennsylvania and try to force uh angry elf cigars on everybody who drinks mad elf and uh then you can really be the hopping mad elf when they don't like your suggestive sale <laughs> figured you get a kick out of that uh i anyways. just want to say the last part is i was looking at this and i wanted to oh here's another exclusive by the way Rocky Patel Ocean Club's Velvet Edition. Yes. Anyways, this year caught my eye. They're $20 bundles, which again, my friend said would be utter crap. Yes, and that's their brands out of whole. Now, there's one in the back that I think is right up the Rita's Alley because it's got the fish on it. Yes, it's called Fine Cat and right here. Like Fine Cat. So, Aaron's done. He just walked off screen. So, anyways, my bottom line is, before he, I close, because I'm closing, is any bundles that you buy, whether it be Thompson, Cigar International, um, Holtz, um, Corona, Famous Smoke Shop, uh, J&R Cigars, uh, Sofuente Cigars, uh, uh, any of these ones that sell bundles. Some of them it might be your bag of crap, but sometimes, as my friend would say, uh, 
one of my friends, Cal, would say, like, people were saying that they needed a bottle of wine, like this, and they said this wine would be utter crap. Sorry, but this wine is a gem at $7. Sometimes guess, you find diamonds when you're looking through junk. You're like, the Carlo Rossi, um... Uh, Pisano. People said that's the most utterly crap in a box or a gallon. Guess what? That is a gem. Well, uh, talking about gems that you managed to find, I went to a garage sale once, and I was just looking around, and there was this old-fashioned ring, and I figured I'd buy it, and they wanted $2 for it. I ended up buying it, and I didn't even know what I got. Took it to a jewelry appraiser, and it turned out that there was three diamonds in it, and two rubies, and two sapphires in it. Now, they were small, but the ring was valued at probably close to $2,000. Now, $2,000 is a great deal for $2. And at one point, I was going to give it as an engagement ring to my now ex-girlfriend, uh, who I found out was just horrible towards me at the time, and... I didn't even know about it. Uh, it just seemed like, well, she's my girlfriend. I should trust her. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to go into that. Just saying, basically, I found this gorgeous ring that was $2. Turned out to be 2000 Now I don't even know where it is. I still have it somewhere. I, I don't know where, though. Anyways, so, uh, this catalog's highly quality. It's more it painful today, to me so. now because it brings back memories of her. And I dated her for four years. Well, she cheated on me the whole time and gave me the cold shoulder and acted like she was my best friend in the world, which she wasn't. <laughs> Anyways, I just want to say to you all, uh, I hope this video is good. Uh, please add and subscribe if you like. Please post comments in the box if you like. Please add and subscribe. Look for another video tomorrow. By the way, we won't just ramble on about cigars. Cigar. No, we, we got to stop the rambling on because uh, you guys don't really want to watch us 36 minutes. We probably give you a headache and... Then you want to go to bed, and you can't go to bed, and you get tossed and turned, wishing it'd go away, and thinking, damn it, why'd I watch him again? May God bless the world. Oh, uh, one other thing, uh, before we end up leaving, is if you can, put down what you think quality is, because... I'm curious what everybody thinks quality is, because quality does vary so uh, much. I... And I don't mean, what do you think a quality cigar is? I just mean, in general, what is quality? little light bulb just came into my head. Yep, the little light bulb actually popped yeah, down. it was on your one. face. It actually went to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> that said, and I quote, that I personally think that we should do a video about quality. So with that said, may God bless the world. <laughs>